see what he said. Oh, come on. And if you can believe, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible if you believe you'll see the glory of God. Look, contrary to what they're saying out there, God ain't telling you to He ain't never going to die. He's always going to lie. He's always going to lie. You can't find the beginning to him or the end to him. And everything he says is settled in heaven once and for all. And when he says, we're going to come. No matter how well I'm saying, when you see me working, there it is. You just open your trap and show it's a problem. Your tongue is saying it ain't working. That means you don't believe it, therefore it won't work. He talking about the same thing all the time. And I will do we get it. Some of y'all know this, this particular preacher, but I went to his church one Sunday and I met him in the back and he said, You've been preaching? I said, Yeah. He said, What, Mark 11? He was being sarcastic. I said, Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm not thinking you would, but I don't know how long it took off. I started saying, well, until I see it come to a pass, we ain't got it. Come on. When he says, have the faith in God, that means we can have it. Amen. He didn't say anything. He, he said, no, have the faith in God. For who said it? Because people are asking. They had walked by. I don't know this. And I'm still talking about it. They walk by a fig tree, and Jesus saw one afar off and goes to it. I don't know if they follow him over there. But he went into the fig tree and there was no fruit on it. Here's a side note. This tree wasn't even supposed to produce fruit in this time of year. Come on. Why did Jesus go to it? I don't know. Did he think it made fruit on it? He said it probably would be. Did he know everything? He knew what the Father told him, what he learned on this earth. But if he, he did, God just didn't, he just didn't know everything because he was God. He could have, but he chose not to come that way. Hmm. Jesus was not. God on the earth walking around like God. He was God on the earth anointed with God. But otherwise, he was the same as you. Or he could not ask us to do with you. And he was without sin. Yeah, but his blood made, must, must make us without sin. Or we couldn't do what he asked us to do. Oh, come on. I mean, you understand that his blood washes us clean. Oh. And if you don't think it does, you're not believing him. And you won't see the mind of God. Such good so he sees that victory and goes and says, and there's no victory. He says, no fruit, no man will eat fruit of you hereafter forever. Now he's telling the tree that cannot produce fruit. And then he's talking to us who can produce fruit. How are we going to be accountable when we can produce fruit and we don't? When he curses the tree, can't produce fruit because it's not in season, he, he calls it dead. So you've got to think of the salah, salah, think about it, right? So he says, they come back the next day, which is Tuesday morning, and Peter sees that tree far off. Jesus said, dealt with it. When he said it, boom, it was over in his mind and his heart and spirit. Because he had declared to him and he believed what he said would come to pass. He didn't come out the next day and say, Well, look at that tree, boy. Look at that tree. Look at that tree. Look at that devil face. Ah, but no, no. He said, Look at it. The tree's dead. No, as soon as he said it, he was determined. He knew before he released those words. If I release them, speak about it. Amen. I think the next day he just walked by and painted that tree because he already knows it. But Peter says, Look, oh, Jesus, the tree, the good tree. What did you do? What's up? Jesus had the faith of God. And then he gives them two examples of how faith God works. And then he gives them one example of how it works. For whosoever shall say this mountain be removed and be cast into the sea, doesn't matter in his heart, but believes that what he said, and he said it before you say it. You believe what you say will come to pass, you can have what you say. Wow. That's the word of God. Come on. And if we believe in our heart, confess with our mouth. And before we even release those words, we believe what we said in the coming past. Jesus said, You have it. Amen. I'm like, man, where is that scripture all my life? And then I'm talking about 94. That when we begin to dig into the things of God, because we have a problem bigger than the mountain we had to get moving. And I read that scripture. I said, man, I've been teaching this in young life. And I don't know. I'm like, our, our teacher those days would roll up that Phillips translation, just teach the word of God as deep as he went, and catch me on fire. And it was the beginning of a blaze, right? Wow. But I didn't hear it then. And then he says, and also, therefore I say to you, what things whatever you desire when you pray. Mm -hmm. It's the same way. If you believe you receive it when you pray, you shall have it. 
We're all called to do something. Amen. Amen. So Jairus, Jesus goes over, the bad men get there, comes out, they come back on the other side of the lake, and the first place we met, there was Jairus who come looking for him. And he comes up to Jesus, and Jesus, my daughter, is at the point of death. <coughs> that means she is just about to die. But if you come to my house, it's a conditional request. Jesus is going to fulfill it. If you come to my house and lay hands on my daughter, then she will be healed. And then she can live. Because if she doesn't heal, she won't die. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, Carl, you know she didn't go, well, let me ask God if this is the will of you. God told him to heal the sick. Raise the dead. He didn't say heal certain the sick. Heal certain the dead. Raise certain the dead. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cast out devils and cleanse them. Amen. Blanket command. Yours and mine. He said, all right, let's go. They take off down the road. Here comes this woman, the issue of blood, 12 years. Comes up, touches the hem of his garment. Jesus stopped. There's such a crowd in there that <laughs> they're just bumping up against him. I used to be in the bar business before I got the restaurant business. Hallelujah. <laughs> but we had these cash registers on the thing, and I had to go pull cash out because the doors are busy. He gets full of the cash. You can't put them on one inside. I'd never take this stick in my pocket. And I put my hands in my pocket, walk back through the crowd. The crowd was so thick that if I didn't have my hands on the thing, and my hands out of my pocket, I didn't know Because they were so thick that you just matched what's in them. It was barbecue, right? It must have been like that because Jesus is walking through the crowd and he just matched me against everybody. They were not social distance whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> and the door goes in and kept it off anyway. Say, well. And then Jesus, this woman, got her way to him and grabbed the hand of his garment because she continually said, Come on, heard and believe, if I touch him, his garment shall be made. If I touch him, his garment shall be made. And as soon as she touched him, his garment, that happened just like she believed and declared what she heard. And she felt in her body that she could feel that plague. And Jesus, knowing himself, how did that? says, Who touched me? He says, And his disciples said, Who touched me? What do you mean, who touched me? Look at these people. He just walked through the car. He said, no, 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 no. Someone pulled something out of him. He felt the anointing of God come out of him and changed the first plan. The way he came down and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Your faith made you whole. Jesus didn't even know she was coming unless God knew. He didn't know who it was. So he said, who got you? She came and told him. He said, daughter, your faith made you whole. While he was yet speaking, somebody came to Jairus and said, Don't bother me anymore. Your daughter is dead. He turned around and said, As soon as he heard it, he says, Jairus, don't be afraid. Don't let fear him. Only believe. You ask me, we're gone. Yeah, but you're dead. Don't say, don't believe. He's dead. Come on. Don't mess it up. Be quiet. Just don't be afraid. She won't believe. He walked into the house. I don't believe that he may have said that she's going to be here. But he's not thinking she's she dead. She said, don't be afraid. Keep your heart the whole thing you ask me. That's what I said. He and his wife Elizabeth have been praying for baby forever. Now they're past age. It's that rise and call to be the priest with the incense. It was in the morning night there. He has these five days here, times two, seven hundred thirty days, seven hundred thirty times a year. Some of them go in. They never did it but once. There's probably twenty hundred thousand priests that were going to do it. It's his time to do it. He goes in to do the incense, and the angel says to him, "Says Zacharias, that prayer you've been praying that you and your wife quit praying, the Lord heard it." Mm -hmm. Thanks. The prayer that you quit praying. This prayer you've been praying, and he hears it. Yeah. Particularly if you speak the word of God in your prayer. That's this key. is the confidence, first John 5 14. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything or make any request according to his word, mm. he hears us. Well, that's the key. He hears us. That means when I say Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want God this what? He's listening. If we come to him on his word, he hears us. Yes. 
You want to get God's attention? Just stand up and begin to read the word out loud. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in prayer, I just sit there and blow out a psalm. I just begin to declare it. That means he's listening. He said that, therefore I believe. Amen. And if I find 